Mr. Speaker. Uh, uh, Honorable Speaker, I beg to move the following motion. That aware that Article 43.1, as read together with Article 53.1b of the Constitution, provides that every person has the right to education and enshrines the right of every child to free, compulsory, basic education. Further aware that Kenya's Vision 2030 identifies education as a crucial component for transforming the country into a globally competitive nation. Appreciating that bursaries play a vital role in supplementing funding for enhancing access to education, particularly for students from disadvantaged backgrounds, and contributes to the realization of universal basic education, noting that various education bursaries exist in the country, including ward-based level bursaries, county government's bursary, national government constituency development fund, the national government affirmative action fund, and the presidential secondary school bursaries, further noting that the evolution of bursary schemes from centralized to community-based administrations aimed to enhance education access, equity, and responsiveness to local needs, concerned that, the, that despite these efforts, the current bursary systems fail numerous, faces numerous challenges, including lack of standardized and transparent selection criteria, delay in disbursement of funds, and insufficient coverage of education costs lead, leading to gaps in support, further concern that these challenges have resulted in persistent disparities in education access, increased dropout rates, particularly in secondary schools, due to financial constraints and strains on household incomes as families struggle to meet educational expenses not covered by bursaries. Acknowledging that the implementation of community-based bursary schemes has not fully achieved its intended objective, hence the need to re-evaluate the current bursary system with a view to ensure equitable and free access to quality education for all students cognizant that the duty of the government to provide free basic education can best be achieved by consolidating education funds and directly remitting to public schools. Now, therefore, this House urges that the government, through the Ministry of Education, in collaboration with the relevant stakeholders, undertakes a comprehensive overhaul of the education bursary system with a view to collapse all bursary schemes and allocate the funds to the State Department of Education for provision of basic education through capitation to be directly remitted to the schools. Uh, Honorable Speaker, Article 43.1F, every person has the right to education. Um, Article 53one Every child has the right to free, compulsory, basic education. I want to underscore the word compulsory. That means no child should be out of school. And as we talk today, so many children are out of school because they have not been able to pay their school fees and the schools are sending them home, including from four leavers. Yesterday I dealt with a case in my county where a student was sent home by the school and the student is in form four and the reason he's sent home because the student owes, uh, the parents of the student owes 130,000 to the school. Now this parent is a mama four. She cannot afford the 130. And the school felt, even though it's two months to the exams, that let's send her home, put pressure on the mother. You cannot get water out of a stone. There is no way that Mama Fua, who I spoke to yesterday, and she told me that, you know what, I'm not even staying in my own house. It's been locked because I can't pay rent. She's not able to get enough jobs. So the Constitution establishes education as a fundamental right to individuals, for an individual's development in the nation's future. So this child, I want, to, I want to paint a picture here, what's happening to this child. All the bursaries, the mother received 5,000 from the Langata uh, um, Member of Parliament, Honorable Jalango. The mother is going to receive now, because she came to my awareness, uh, 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 53,000 were put on the full scholarship that we give quite a few students. 
As NGAF, we only get 1.9 million shillings per constituency per year. Uh, MPs can spend anything between 50 million and 70 million. The problem we're having right now is that our bursaries individually, okay, cannot ensure that all the students in our respective wards, constituencies, or counties can actually have that compulsory education that is within their right in the Constitution. So we're actually not living to the mandate of the Constitution. And I know it's going to cost a lot of money, but if we scrap out corruption, right, we should be able to ensure that Vision 2030, right, will be attained. All students in Kenya will achieve that basic education from ECD, primary, junior secondary, and secondary. And then help will kick in. And, but if we don't do this, if we don't do this, then we're going to end up with a situation that is going to actually fail us as a country. We have so many young children right now loitering in the various, in the various estates because they cannot go to school. Some of them are in jail because they end up committing crimes. So we are failing the citizens of this country by not having education, the free basic education. Now some students will make it and those students who make it will end up going to university. Help will kick in. After we finish with free basic compulsory education, we then need to look at how we're going to handle TVET, because not all students will go to university. But one step at a time, we need to actually start this movement where we as MPs and leaders, with the various funds that we have, agree that we need to actually push the Ministry of Education oversight, provide the budget, so the Ministry of Education can provide free secondary education. What do I mean by free secondary education? I don't mean that we only, we only provide the fees. You know, high school is currently free, all right? It's boarding schools that you pay anything from 40,000 uh, to 79,000, all right? But the thing is, when I say free, I mean we have to provide the uniforms. We have to provide the books. We have to provide the teachers. We have to provide the, the, the sporting, the money that they need to go out for activities. I went to a primary school recently, and one of the students that I had taken to school, they, the reason they didn't go to school is because they didn't have uniform. I bought them the uniform, I took them to the primary school, and their school had just gone on a trip. It was a geography learning trip. That student and many other students whose parents could not afford 2,000 shillings could not go on those trips. I recall in my childhood days when I used to go on school trips, there was no segregation, there was no discrimination. Whether you had money or not, the school provided the trip for you. So today we are doing something wrong. We are actually making parents and children grow up with very low self-esteem. The mother yesterday called me and told me, I am actually depressed. I'm in town with my child. Can you imagine what was going through that child's mind? That my mother is walking around from one Mwashimiwa's office to another, begging for my fees so I can go back and sit for my exams. That child is actually going to be demoralized. That child is going to be messed up emotionally. And I feel that we need to do something about that. There is also a lack of standardized criteria. The lack of um, uniform selection. I mean, how do we decide who requires the bursaries? I think we really need to make sure that it's free for all so that we don't have inequality, we don't have favoritism, and we don't have inefficiency in awarding the funds. And also, every MP, even the MP who puts the maximum from his NGCDF, 70 million to giving out bursaries, he's still not reaching everyone, and not every child that he gives 5, 10, 15,000 is actually going to complete school. That child is going to drop out of school because if, if, if he's in a boarding school, he requires 53,000. You give him 15,000, which is the highest ceiling, he's still going to be sent home. And then we are spending so much money on education. We give over 600 or 700 billion to the Ministry of Education. We give so much money for the teachers. And then we are sending these children home and the quality of education is going down. When I talk about the quality of education, 
right? When the school is performing bad, it's because half the time the student is actually sent home. In a year, the student spends one term at home. Can you imagine what is happening? This is when we end up with teenage pregnancies. This is when we end up with taking drugs because the mother now goes to work. The child is left unattended at home. We really need to become serious about free, basic, compulsory education. You can't even tell the chief, go pick up the children that haven't reported to school from transitioning from primary to secondary. Go and take them to school. Which school is he going to take them? No uniform. First of all, uniform for me is overrated. It's still a very colonial thing. Government has got NYS. Why can't we provide standardized uniform for, for children, cheap, uh, affordable for the government, and provide it free for the children? How many times do I go to school and I see a young girl whose low self-esteem, besides being sent home, is wearing torn clothes? really faded, torn clothes. Can you imagine the stigma that that child is going through? So why can't we provide that basic school uniform? Provide the books. And then, you know, when it comes to um, the ministry, I mean, I am very, 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 very proud of the choice that the president made in C.S. Julius uh, Migos Ogamba as the CS for education. I have interacted with him. He has been to parliament to answer questions. He's hands-on. He gets it. I actually talked to him this morning and I said, besides giving you the money and making sure you get the capitation to the schools, the order and the system of capitation also has to be managed. Because if we amalgamate our bursaries, it might be about 60, 70 billion. It's really 10% of what he's getting right now. But what we are saying is we want the government to provide free, basic, compulsory education. No child should be at home. Pro build more and more secondary schools. Make sure that if we say it's free education tomorrow, we will end up having to build extra classrooms. When we need more classrooms, we build classrooms based on one man, one, one shilling. Because what's going to happen is you'll have certain constituencies where the, classrooms are, the schools are overwhelmed. They'll need more classrooms. Let's have makeshift tents. Let's hire the teachers. Let's make sure. And then you know what? The government is going to have to come back and say, you know what, to do this, to the citizens, to do this, we need to make, collect this much money. But before the government asks for money from the citizens, right, they need to show us accountability for what they're getting. I know that to provide free basic education, we will need probably a trillion plus. But the thing is, when we give that trillion plus to the schools, are we getting the schools to actually perform? Are we devolving corruption even to the schools? I've heard, I've heard people say that even within the various funds there is corruption. I think we have to really have a moral reflection as a country, as leaders and as parents. Because the, it's, not just the, it's not just the leaders who are corrupt, also you have parents who are corrupt, you have uh, citizens who are corrupt, and it's a chain reaction for everything that is going on in this country. So what we have to do is to ensure that we, we collect the resources and then we disperse the resources because the delays of resources, if we, if we say that the government is going to give the capitation, if the government doesn't send the capitation on time, doesn't send the correct amount of capitation, then what will happen is the schools are going to be auctioned because some of the schools right now have a lot of money that they owe. So we need to basically have a, 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 an audit done about what would it cost to have complete free education. Now, I know that we, we have free education, but there are so many hidden costs. The hidden costs come in the uniforms, which are very expensive, and it's a, it's a cartel and a record in itself. The hidden cost comes in the school board of management and parents association asking for money from the parents. The hidden cost comes in the, in the feeding programs. Dishina County in Nairobi is working for primary schools. We should also make it work for secondary school. We should also make sure that it's fortified and it has a variety. I've heard students also complain because even if we're giving something for free, we have to give something that is of quality. Student wants variety. I've heard Nairobi students asking for chapati, not rice and dengu and beans every day. Um, for, so when I, when I speak about uh, um, uh, amalgamation of all the bursaries, I'm not speaking only about um, um, 
us because we know that that's not going to be enough. But as leaders, if we make the first step and say, you know what, we're not going to get involved in bursaries, but then we oversight the ministry, then we provide the resources, then we go to our constituents and we talk to them about the need to actually have money for education. We've put money for housing as a housing levy. Should we think in future about an education levy where money is collected specifically for education, where parents will actually be able to say, you know what, we're not going to oppose this because this education levy is going to ensure that my child goes to school from ECD all the way to secondary. Then in the end, they get into help and they get the funding model where they'll get the loans. Um, uh, honorable Speaker, when we merge all these bursary schemes into a single fund managed by the State Department of Education, this consolid cons consolidation will eliminate du duplication and ensure standardization and increase efficiency in the fund management. When I say duplication, what do I mean? There are people who know how to apply for bursaries. And those people who know how to apply for bursaries will go from the ward to the MP to the woman rep. You know, uh, they'll go everywhere. But there are many who don't know. Like the lady yesterday who reached, finally managed to reach me. But even if she had reached me, the funds was not enough. So we're discriminating. Because we, if we, why should one child get it and not another. So why don't we as leaders fight for free, basic, compulsory education? This fund, which is actually causing us not to oversight the Ministry of Education properly. Let us look at what, let the, let the Ministry come back and give us an answer. This is a step in the right direction. Give us an answer as to how much money do we need to fund education. We have development partners. We've got private sector partners. You know, we've got the wings to fly. We've got so many people, MasterCard, so many people funding education. Can we pool all those resources and ensure that every child in Kenya, and a child, I'm talking about children up to secondary, goes for free. And when it comes to boarding, I mean, it's so disheartening to see children walking with mattresses, walking with big boxes, going to boarding school. Let's equip the boarding schools. Let them show up to school to learn. And let's give them all those facilities in the school. What will, we, what will it cost for us to do that? Let's have an audit. Let's start the process so that we can ensure that we actually live up to the promises that were asked for by Kenyans enshrined in our constitution. Uh, Honorable Speaker, these reforms will ensure that every student, irregardless of their social economic background, have equitable access to quality education. Funds will reach those who need them without delay or discrimination, without mothers and fathers having to tamak, without children having to be sent home from school. Honorable Speaker, by covering all costs associated with basic education, the reforms will reduce the dropout rates in secondary school, enabling more students to complete their studies. In addition, families will, be, will be relieved by the burden of struggling to cover school costs, not currently covered by bursaries such as exam fees, uniforms, materials, promoting financial stability at the household level. Um, Honorable Speaker, allow me to emphasize that providing free basic education is the responsibility of the government, uh, is a responsibility that the government must uphold. Reforming the bursary system is not just a policy change, it is a moral and constitutional obligation to ensure that no child is denied the opportunity to learn due to being marginalized. I therefore urge that the Ministry of Education, in collaboration with all relevant stakeholders, undertake this comprehensive overhaul and implement the new system to provide free basic education for all. I, as I conclude, I reiterate that this motion is about ensuring the government fulfills its constitutional duty to provide free and compulsory education to every child in Kenya. Picture a young student in the informal settlements or a rural village whose dream for education is currently threatened by financial barriers. This reform, by consolidating bursary schemes and directly funding schools will lift the burden and ensure that no child is left behind uh, simply because of lack of resources. I am aware that the speaker engaged the Ministry of Education through the clerk to provide us with information that will birth a legislative proposal to address this issue. Equally, the Constitutional Court sitting in Nakuru directed that there is a need to consolidate bursaries. Honorable Speaker, this reform 
will lay the foundation for an equitable education system, one that not only opens doors for these young minds, but also builds a future where education empowers entire generations. As we secure their access to learning, we are also securing Kenya's social and economic development, creating a nation where every child can fulfill their potential. I have to end by saying that 70% of the students... My colleagues will support...